Greetings all on this beautiful but chilly winter's day. I hope you, friends and family are all well during these unsettled times. We acknowledge that we are on the land of the Ghana people, the traditional custodians of the Adelaide Plains. We are awed that they celebrate the religious significance of place, plant and all living creatures, and that care for the earth is implanted in their law. We honour them and also delight in the sacred in our midst. We pray that in the power of the Holy Spirit, we might work together for reconciliation and justice in this land. Arid dust, otherwise known as desert sands, is very fine, easily blown by the winds, and it just clings to everything. When walking, your feet get covered in dust. I'd like you to imagine for a moment walking a dry, arid landscape and dust clinging to your feet and lower legs. Let us pray. Come to us, O God of all. We long to hear your wisdom. We set aside our busyness and worries to come to this space and gather as one. You have brought wonder into this week at unexpected times and in unexpected places. So open our minds to think on this. Open our hearts to cherish this. Open our souls to receive this. And together, as your people, we will celebrate your love. Amen. How does it feel to be made welcome? How does it feel when you are not welcome? Jesus remains in the Galilean area. Although he has moved inland from the Sea of Galilee, where much of his ministry has taken place until now. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honour, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And Jesus could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their disbelief. Then Jesus went among the villagers teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except the staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on a two tunics. He said to them, 
Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, then and they refuse to hear you as you leave. Shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, we saw Jesus' miraculous gift of healing powerfully demonstrated with Jairus' daughter returned from death. Wow! Is there anything Jesus can't do? All power and authority rests in Jesus. Yet, today we see limitations, very human limitations. Two connected stories again, Jesus returning to his hometown and Jesus sending out the disciples to further his work. As we enter the first story, Jesus is teaching at the synagogue this time in his hometown, Nazareth. The people there are astounded by Jesus' wisdom and deeds of power Jesus has performed elsewhere. However, they are stuck in their image of Jesus' identity as an ordinary person, one of their town. The amazement of the villagers is shaded with hostile and offended feelings. Not in spite of, but because of their social and familial connections to Jesus. The villagers view Jesus as an upstart. We learnt quite a few details about Jesus' life there, including the names of his members of his family and his former profession as a carpenter. As eldest son, he would have taken up his father's trade. It is often assumed that Mary was by this point a widow, and even though Jesus had many brothers who could help care for her, he was the eldest son. And it was probably regarded unfavorably for him to leave her in order to pursue ministry. Also, while as a skilled carpenter his status would have been higher than the impoverished labouring classes, it was still lower than that of the educated classes. So teaching at a synagogue would have been viewed as an attempt to elevate his own position above his fellow villagers. All this influenced attitudes of those in his hometown. Therefore, Jesus is unable to do much there. Just as these villagers are amazed and offended at Jesus, he is amazed at their unbelief and leaves in search of welcoming areas. After this, Jesus decides to send out some of his disciples in pairs to continue his ministry in the region. The instruction he gives them, however, challenge them to trust in God's provisions during their journey. They are to take nothing beyond what they are immediately wearing, not even an extra tunic which could keep them warm in case they were left without lodgings for a night. This means the disciples are left dependent on the hospitality of those they seek to serve. They are to honour this hospitality by not leaving their initial hosts in search of better accommodation once they become established in a town. However, after the rejection Jesus just experienced in his hometown, 
He is also aware that his disciples will not always be welcome wherever they go. In those instances, he instructs the disciples not to waste their efforts in these places, but to shake off the dust off their feet if they leave. This, though, is not making a judgment on those people who were inhospitable. It's more like creating closure, ending it all there, leaving it all behind, every little bit including the dust. Everything is left behind. Our actions are to be welcoming with generous hospitality as we serve with humble hearts, healing hands, with justice and equity. And so the next time when you have given of yourself, made yourself vulnerable, put yourself out there whether among friends, at school or work or in any other situation, and what you offer is rejected, try not to get angry or hurt or take it personally, but shake off the dust of your feet, leave it all behind, leave behind the ill will and inhospitable or judging behavior and neither adopt it. This frees you up to continue to be and act with justice, equity, humility, kindness, and unconditional love. Let us pray. In you, God of hope, there are always new beginnings, new ministries, new companions, in our missional pathways. We lose hope so easily, are encouraged by the gentle love that you bring before our eyes each day, never harsh or aggressive. You gently reveal to us new pathways to live in Jesus' way. We thank you that you draw us forward and help us learn from what has gone before, ever present, ever listening. We are thankful that you stay with us, for we may lose our way. Amen. And a benediction to send us out. Our God surrounds us and supports us. The Spirit's voice is spoken in unexpected ways. So, take time to listen each day. Jesus' call is to all of us who follow the way. Let us then step forward, surrounded in love, spoken to with grace, while following a call that can bring peace and unity to our local community and radiate to the world. Go in peace to love and serve in the way of Christ this day and forevermore. Amen.